Ukraine, having captured a significant part of the Kursk region, nullified all the Kremlin's red lines. And this means that ATA CMS missiles will soon begin flying at Russian military airfields. Blogger and military observer Michael Naki spoke about this on Telegram. The Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region have demonstrated that all of Moscow's threats are a bluff. Despite this, the United States is still afraid of Ukraine's victory, Naki believes. The administration of US President Joe Biden is trying to avoid what they call escalation. And it began to seem that this could no longer be overcome. But Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky decided to act differently. Not to seek permission from the United States, but to receive their approval for the use of equipment after the fact, Naki noted. He doubts that Washington will change its tactics of providing limited aid to Ukraine after the Kursk operation. However, this will no longer be as important as before. Most likely, the Ukrainians will begin to fight at full force without asking permission from the US authorities. There are no more red lines, and soon the airfields of the Russian Aerospace Forces will start burning. The blogger stated, The Ukrainian army has used ATA CMS to devastating effect against Russian airfields inside Russian-occupied Ukraine. It hasn't used them against Russian airfields in Russia from where Russian warplanes stage attacks on Ukrainian cities. Which isn't to say Ukraine is powerless to strike Russian airfields. The Ukrainian Intelligence Directorate has developed a dizzying array of long-range strike drones and routinely launches them at targets inside Russia. The deepest of these raids may have struck a Russian bomber base in northern Russia a staggering 1,100 miles from Ukraine. But these drones are slow, relatively easy to intercept and carry fairly small explosive payloads. They travel farther than even the longest range ATA CMS, but they're much less powerful. It's not too late for Ukraine to strike back at some of the warplanes that are making life in Ukraine a waking nightmare for millions of Ukrainians. Ukraine is creating new mechanized brigades. It's a sign that Ukraine's leaders don't expect Russia's war against Ukraine to end anytime soon. It could be months before the first of the new brigades is ready for combat, Forbes reports. Military land, which closely monitors the structure of the Ukrainian military, has obtained photographs that allegedly show trainees of the new 160th Mechanized Brigade. The new mechanized brigades will be trained in other countries and will attract many recruits from Ukrainians living there. The 160th Mechanized Brigade is reportedly training in Poland. The creation of new brigades depends on two things, successful mobilization and continued foreign support for Ukraine's war effort. Mobilization is the source of manning the two brigades. Foreign allies are likely to provide the bulk of their heavy equipment. The formation of the brigades comes three months after the completion of the previous expansion of the army. Since last autumn, the Ukrainian army has formed 10 new brigades, four mechanized, five infantry and a ranger. Infantry brigades are the lightest in terms of manning, they mostly ride on trucks. A Jaeger brigade is a medium weight force consisting of trucks and light armored vehicles. Mechanized brigades are the heaviest. They ride on tracked and wheeled armored vehicles and usually have a company of at least a dozen tanks. It is unclear how many brigades the army is currently forming and what they will be. There may be 10. On paper, the 10 brigades need 20,000 troops. Ukraine's mobilization law, which came into force in May, aims to attract another half million men to the armed forces by lowering the draft age from 27 to 25, adding penalties for draft evasion and providing more incentives for volunteers. The various ground forces, the Marines, the National Guard and Special Border Guard units control about 100 combat brigades and account for the majority of military personnel. The ground forces have suffered the majority of Ukraine's combat casualties, including potentially 60,000 fatalities. Ukraine must mobilize enough troops to replace losses, as well as add troops for new brigades and any support units they need. That's easier said than done in a country of just 38 million that already supports an army of a million. 
It is no coincidence that Ukraine's defense ministry plans to draw conscripts from a large pool of Ukrainians living abroad. About 768,000 Ukrainian men aged 18 to 64 had received temporary protection in European Union countries as of the end of last year, according to EU data obtained by the Associated Press. Obtaining armored vehicles could be equally challenging, and it is unclear whether Ukraine can do so without sustained foreign support. A mechanized brigade requires several hundred pieces of equipment, including tanks, combat vehicles, howitzers, multiple launch rocket systems, air defense systems, engineering vehicles, and trucks. Ten brigades would need 1,000 vehicles. To put that into perspective, in the first 29 months of the full-scale war, Ukraine's allies pledged to contribute about 12,000 vehicles to the war effort. Not all of those vehicles are available to the new units. They replace about 6,400 vehicles lost. It could be six months or more before the new brigades are ready for combat. In other words, these are the 2025 brigades, units that could be fighting in the fourth year of the full-scale war, the publication notes.